before we go anywhere, do anything with this. Uh, a bit of a disclaimer. That son of a bitch right there, that thing can hurt you. Like, really hurt you. Like, maybe kill you. So I'm not telling you how to do this. I'm not showing you how to do this. I'm not advocating that you do this. I'm merely letting you watch me do it. Are we all clear? So, I'm having a problem with my spring brake leaking. And when your spring brakes leak, you can't build air pressure unless the parking brake is on, right? I took them apart, this one, and then the spring brake on the center axle. I made an attempt to reseat the rubber and put them back together and it failed miserably. And I actually made the problem on both of them worse. So I assume at this point I have torn them, which is fine. They were all cracked and trashed. Now I spent quite a bit of time looking for retire replacement units. And they're just, they're not many out there available and the ones that I was coming up with, many of them were used takeoffs. So while I don't consider myself an absolute computer expert, I'm reasonably good at searching for things. And I spent two hours and was unable to locate. So they're a little harder to come by than I thought. And the prices for the ones I'd seen sold in the past were quite high. I mean, the, uh, the rubber in here is $5. So again, I'm not saying you should do this. In fact, I'm saying you shouldn't, but you can watch me do it. First things first, the truck's been sitting here for quite some time and it has zero air pressure left in it, which is good, but you're going to want to double check that. You're going to want to make sure it's chalked, or you can do what I do here in the wintertime, and that is let it freeze itself into the divots it creates when you park it. So, yeah, there's, there's no moving her right now. Not that it matters, because, you know, all the spring brakes in theory are locked on. This is your caging tool right here. Inspect it. Um, this one is an Acme thread, so it's like a jack thread, square cut threads. And you want to look at those ears. What is that noise? Oh, lovely, it's got snow on me. You want to look at those ears and make sure that they're not damaged in any way, shape, or form. Not even the tiniest, slightest, most minuscule little bit of damage. You really want to see that the bolt is grade 8. No stampings, but it, it is the, uh, the proper plated gold color. Not that that is in any way a 100% guarantee, but if I saw any damage... Here, here's something you can do. Find something really hard whack it. If you can make a mark on the bolt, go buy a new one. Alright. I can't make a mark of any kind. So, I'm going to declare it fit for use. God, I hate doing this. So anyways, I'm going to add a little wax to the threads. It's going to be quite a bit of tension there. To pop out this cover. Usually they twist and have little tabs. I have very poor luck um, lining up the tabs. Just slip the bolt in. Okay. Spend some time, if you've never done this, spend some time getting the feel. Again, not that I'm saying you should. Spend some time getting the feel what it feels like when the tabs and ears are in the proper location. Get a feel for what it feels like when the ears maybe are not where they're supposed to be. But in effect, you slip it in, you give it a quarter turn, you pull out. That should, in theory, now be properly set. I'm holding gentle pressure back on it. Actually, I'm going to double check again. Okay, that comes out. 
locked in place. There's going to be a fair bit of pressure on that. I mean, it is, after all, the size of a car suspension spring. This is the part where I struggle. I never know just how far to take them. You don't want to go too far, because you might break a spring. You don't want to go far enough, because then she'll pop off there. I hate this. I hate this. Alright. So that's got the dragon in its lair. Now it's time to open the doors. And that is these clamps right here. When I pull these clamps, I will do them from back behind here. Okay? That said, when, if, God forbid, the ears, the tabs break off on that caging bolt, it will launch this case and the spring backwards, and it will launch, what are we going to call this, the spring seat, the metal piston, it will launch that forwards. So you don't want to be in this line of fire if you can help it. I know a lot of guys will wedge themselves in between the duels and reach over. And I think that's just to put more stuff between you and it. That's a three quarter. These are nine sixteenths. You're probably gonna have paint and crap on them. Yeah, you can't really get a die on there. I, I Sometimes I use a thread file and I'll try to clean them off. And sometimes you just, you just wreck a nut. Whatever, 9 sixteenths, 3 quarters, death. Let's get the rest of it apart. Please excuse the noise. The uh, snow has turned into a mixture of freezing rain and abject misery. So that's fun. All I'm rubbing on there, that's a graphite wax stick. I make them uh, with graphite and wax. And it just gives the bolts some lubrication, and yet uh, it's not going to attract all the dirt and dust. All right, here comes the part I hate. So you figure if this thing comes rocketing out of here, it's going to skip off of this and come straight at the camera. But it's not, hopefully, coming at me. You know, when I uh, had this apart just a few days ago, I flipped the bolts around and put the nuts on top because it seemed like that'd be more advantageous, easier to get to. Now I realize why they don't do it. Because this just drops down and spins. So you gotta get a finger in there. So when you put yours back together, you put, put the heads on top, bolts, nuts rather, down below. So you're not stuck like I am, getting way too close to the beast. I think I might have to clean those threads up. Those don't look healthy. Oh, you gotta get, you gotta make me get in here. This is my own damn fault. Watch banging these lines. If they're like mine, they're brittle plastic. In fact, there's a fairly good chance that if you ever find entire replacement cans when you went to swap them, you're going to want to pick up some extra line to go with it. We got them both loose. That does not mean 
everything is fine. In fact, that's kind of like you got a double trigger. Well, you've just set the first one. So. That is the unit itself. You kind of want to inspect that the ears are properly set on this. This would be the, we'll call that the spring plate of death. And this would be the coiled spring of death. These would be the ears of death here. You want to make sure that the uh, caging tool is properly seated in there. If you saw something, anything different. Oh hell, I don't know what you'd do. Because you can't even throw the thing away or kill somebody else. But we're going to go ahead and put that right there. So that if it... Whoa! I don't want to point it at me. I don't want to point it at me no matter what. So that if it goes off, heads into the tires. Alright, let's inspect this awesome diaphragm again. Find out how in the world did I screw it up the first time. When I redid this. Okay. Now, when I tried to temporarily put her back on the road, what I did is I cleaned all the crusties off of here. And I, I put a little grease on the, the ceiling surfaces there. And it just, just to try to keep them limping along. And, uh, yeah. You, you can see what I mean. This thing is trash, trash, trash. I was just trying to, you know, do a little parade duty with it. Well, let me go get the new ones. What can I tell you? Getting the new rubber on is a bitch. You know, your old ones, they've taken a set. So they're, they're caved in like this. And your new ones clearly aren't, which means you got to do that roll for the unit. And it. Anyways, this isn't something I guess you normally do on the truck. Usually you take it off. So my my advice is to is to put it on there. You sort of fly this in, hook one side. Then you use your fingers on the, the death cover here to hold that rubber in place, and then you slide, this will make sense if you're looking at your own truck, you'll slide the far ear down, at which point you begin this merry-go-round of hell where you sort of maneuver this thing back and forth and in and around up a little too far past and back down and anything to try to get that damn thing to center of which I've only had somewhat marginal success And then in theory, these things clamp on. My rubber diaphragm is down too far. Not much, maybe only an eight sixteenth of an inch. But it's down enough. There's a lip inside here, it's just not sitting in. I need the diaphragm to stay with the backer. Oh, fuck this thing. Oh, okay, that's 
better. What it is, is it's, it's off center, you know, and so it doesn't want to, it doesn't want to roll this edge uniformly. I was told by the parts guys, this is a bit of a retrofit, but that it would work. Hey, now that moved it into a much nicer spot. Huh. Well, let's look at cleaning these up so that they'll slip on a little better and move towards getting some clamps on the death machine here. Alright, so I just scraped them and I'm lubricating them here with, uh, it's called Rye Glide. It's a tire changing lubricant. It's the same thing I lubricated the center of this with in the hopes that I could get it to slide around. I don't know if it's what you're supposed to use or not, so I'm not going to recommend you use it. I'm just telling you, that's what I did. Started it all. screwed it up until we get air on the truck. Figure if I did, and I have to start trying to find freaking new cans, well, all I'm out is $10 in rubber. But I'm hoping rubber will readjust itself <sighs> and everything will be fine. I'm going to go ahead and jinx it by putting the uh, caging tool back in. Heck, I'm going to jinx it even more. I'm going to put the cap back on it. We're just going to pretend like we honestly think that worked. We're just going to pretend like we think that actually worked. So much so we're going to do the other one. And we're going to put it back together. Fire it up. Actuate the brakes a few times. All righty here. He's been on the block heater for a while.
voltage is a little low. Come on, oil pressure! I don't hear anything. Of course, the motor's running. Let me go cycle the parking brake and the service brakes a half dozen, maybe more times. Then we'll find out. Hey, there's a good sign. She powered right up and blew off. Blew the air dryer. <laughs> I haven't had it blow the air dryer since this project started. It couldn't build enough pressure to do it. So already we got a small win. She blew off. I sure hope our business model works. Either the business model or the high speed camera. One of them has to work or this truck is getting sold. I do like this truck. I hate to say it, despite my naysaying, it appears I don't have to, I don't actually have to go back there. I can tell they're not leaking. Uh, right there, the gauges tell me they're not leaking. Will they just tear here long term? I have no idea. I will still try to track down a spot for a complete replacement can because I got some corrosion that's eaten out the lip on one of mine. I guess my other bags are holding too because if I stand on the air brakes, uh, my needles go up, not down. I need to remember to check my uh, hour gauge, hour meters. I want to say the truck has been at 70 hours now for a very long time. It was like 6,500 when I mileage-wise when I picked it up. Well, this has been a nice. development yeah. parking brake is still off let's go find out if they're hissing I don't know something's hissing it's not that brake can Where the heck is it hissing from? It's hissing from this one. Ah. Well. I mean, clearly it's not a, a big leak, but any leak is a leak I don't like. I'll try, I'll try caging it again, taking it loose, rotating it around. All right, well, all right, so I took, <coughs> I took the middle axle back apart, not all the way, I didn't actually remove, just uh, remove the band clamps, and you could actually feel the rubber center itself. And, uh, yeah, then I just put the band clamps back on. And I didn't have to tighten it down nearly as much. And everything appears to be sealing hunky-dory. So, I'll just say one last time, don't do this. 
I'm not teaching you how to do this. I just let you watch me figure out what it took. But I was successful at getting those uh, civilian Napa diaphragms to apparently work fine. And I've cycled, I've cycled the service brakes and the parking brakes, you know, 20, 30 times. Uh, I suppose we'll still wait to see long term. But the fact was, once I pulled that loose and that rubber shpunk, right to the middle, I think, I think they're centering themselves when the pistons come in and out. I believe that's okay. Again, if uh, somebody has a source for those, uh, I'm going to want to carry at least one when we're given tours. At least one. Complete one. Of course, I'm sure as soon as I go to try to take it loose, I'll, uh, I'll break those crappy plastic lines. That'll be the next thing. But I'm going to want a source for these. Not a, a guy that sometimes has them, but like where the hell can I actually buy them? And if they're that scary one-off, well, then I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Ooh, that one's got little rubbers protecting the bolt threads. Nice. Nice, nice. Well, freezing rain's coming down. Misery's falling from the sky. It's dark, I'm hungry, the kid wants to play, I'm done. Thanks for watching.